All right, now as I'm typesetting and I look at the full thing, remember I can always customize as I go. And I'm going to simplify all these layers I have. All right. So I'm going to combine text where I need it. This is just a sketch. I don't want to lose my text blocking sketch, which is here and here. So I'm going to put all of that into one group. Call that my text block. And then these other layers aren't really necessary anymore. I don't even need this one anymore, right? Okay, and then all of these, I see the different modifications. All of those can be merged together. So I basically have top type setting, and I can set that to multiply mode, so it gets rid of all the white. And I have my bottom type setting. And I'll set that to multiply mode. And I'll give myself just a blank white background too. So you want to understand what each of your layers is doing. Not black. And then you want to make any refinements. And I think I want my S just to be a little different. In fact, I think I want it to be more like what my sketch is. So what I'll do is I'll take my text blocking sketch S right here. I'm just going to select that and move that up above. Again, just layers and duplicating and playing with pixels, compositing skills. And then what I can try to do is duplicate this S. By hitting Command X and then Command V, it puts it on its own layer and deletes it from the other layer. Right? And then I'm going to try Control T and warping it. S's can be really, really tricky. It's more like that shape. And then I'm going to use my lasso. Just right on that layer. I don't want that belly or that indent in it anymore. Fill that with black. And then I want this to be a, th a thicker stem in the middle. Maybe a more shallow belly. Ah. All these ways of playing with type that we can try out. And again, some people love playing with type, other people just really, really get frustrated by it. So you can make the type as simple or as ornate as you like. And then remember, you can also draw shapes like I'm doing here and then fill them with white to customize your letter forms. I think I want to slope it out on the back end a little bit like this. I'll fill that with white. OK, 
Okay, so now let's try bringing that S in. See if it feels a little bit better than before. All right, now we're going to do two things. One is I'm going to do a screen grab of my layout so far. My typesetting, my text blocking, even my spot illustration, even if it's just the sketch of your spot illustration. I put it all in. Then I'm going to do this next step of turning off everything except the black type just on white like that and then saving that file export as a JPEG. Just a simple JPEG. Save it, it's going to go to my downloads. Then turn everything back on and save your work. Make sure you know where it's saved and change the name if you need to. I'm going to make this my official, well, no, I'll leave it as my text blocking sketch for now. But that's what I've been working on. Okay, now you're going to close PhotoP once you're done with that. And we're going to open vector.com, V-E-C-T-R. We're going to use it online. And we're going to upload an image. I need to go home and create a new, uh, let's see, open file. That's what I want. And I'm going to go to my assignment six folder. And I'm going to open up, oh, it's in my downloads still. That JPEG I just saved. Let's see. I'm just going to click new artwork. There we go. And we're going to do a size. Let's see. Wish this could be expressed in inches. Let's go to print. really hard to see but basically we're going to do these are all tiny hmm. let's do this first one I'm just trying to create enough space in vector.com so that we can trace our vectors it's pretty arbitrary right vectors can be scaled but here we go. Yeah, so if we use that, that first option, we get a nice vertical artboard. And now I'm going to drag on my screen grab first, right here. And it should come in as an image that then I can hold down option. Actually, option doesn't work, but that's okay. I'm going to stretch it to fit on the artboard. And then I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to onion skin this image. So I'm going to take the opacity down to about 50%. This is just to remind me where I'm uh, fitting the text around my image if I want to make modifications. Then I'm going to lock my image. Okay, so to make a vector of your text, what do you do? Before we use the pen tool for almost everything, right? And we can again, we can zoom in. This is in vector.com, just like we did for our logo. But now we're doing a logo type instead of a logo. And if I use my pen tool, I can plot a point. I can plot and curve. I can plot and curve, I can plot and curve, I can plot and curve. Okay. 
and it will you know, give me a vector outline. But this is a good example where we're not trying to control it as much as a logo. So instead, I'm going to use the pencil tool, which in vector is like a free form pen tool. And I'm just going to draw around my type. And if I need to do it in different portions, I will. Because the most important thing is that I close my loop. This is what's called a freehand path. Ah! This is not going well for me right now. I clicked on home instead of that. But let me pause. I had a question in it. All right, so I'm in vector.com here. It's not going to save my progress on it unless I, I sign in with an account. Right now, I don't have any account signed in. But using that freehand path, you know, it looks pretty wonky like this. And you can see it in your layers. Let me fill it with black. And then let me turn off the border, right? So then when I continue it with the pencil tool, I then want to make sure that that path, I can click on it in layers, is similarly filled in. And when they overlap like this and that there's no border on it, when I select both of them, ah, got to get off that freehand path tool. By holding down shift, I'll get that option of merging them together. So now it's one freehand path, right? Now, what I don't love about this is how it's not very clean, but it's a lot cleaner in resolution than the, the rasterized screen grab that we had before. Because remember, vectors can be any size we want. So let me try this another way that's maybe not quite so big. So this time, I'm going to go to vector.com. And I'm going to say, log in. And I'm just going to use my, my Google credentials to create or to log in, you know. And in the, the history of what I've done with this program, you know, we did our logos with this. I can click on that project. I can open it. And that gave me a certain size. And with that project, it really was about cleaning up my anchor points, not having too many. Remember, the more anchor points you have, the more issues you can have. I can come and troubleshoot with you. But ultimately, we can always just go home and let's try making a new artwork with a, a small size. So let's just use page number one as the defaults. And we'll give it a file name and we'll call this, you know, assignment six vector type. Because we're going to see if we can get that pencil tool to give us a cleaner, a cleaner line. All right. So now on this, what do I do? I'm going to drag in my screen grab. And then I'm going to limit its opacity, onion skin it to 